Matt, today's national days. What are we doing this time? What's going on? All right. Treat yourself day. Okay. That's what she said day. Oh, dear. And transfer money to your son day. Oh, yes. Last week we had transfer money to your daughter day. Mm-hmm. And I looked it up and I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. So here we are. Transfer money to your son. And if you haven't done it to your daughter yet, then probably better do that too. That's what she said. That's what she kidding. said. That's terrible. I see, that's perfect. What are you talking about? Terrible. Now, I got to ask you about Treat Yourself Day. Yeah. Excuse me. Treat Yourself Day, I think is how you said it. Treat Yourself. That's how it's spelled? Yes. Treat, is that spelled Y-O apostrophe? Yes. S-E-L-F? Yes. All right. Treat Yourself. Did you watch Parks and Rec? Just a little bit. I've only seen a few episodes. So are you familiar with Donna and Tom on Treat Yourself Day? No, I'm not. Okay. That was the day that they would ex- have extravagant spending and spa day and treat yourself. Interesting. Now, that's an NBC mm. show, right? Yeah. And then you have the NBC show, The Office, which is known for That's What She Said. That's What She Said. So we're celebrating must TV, it seems. Well, I did say a That's What She Said joke to my parents years ago and my dad was like uh that joke's been around longer than the office so right yes it has been i the worst is though when your children say something that's kind of awkward and the uncles are like that's what she said you're like no it's not funny (laughs) when kids say it in which case my brother says that's what makes it funny wait wait the Uh, kids say that's what she said or no the uncles the kids say something to tee up the okay Mm -hmm, i see mm -hmm inadvertently tee up their Uncle Patrick. Well, the kids have to learn that's what she said sometime. Sometime, yeah. They have no idea what he's talking about. Right, I understand. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of kids now are learning it from The Office, though. The Office is very popular with the youth, you know? With, yeah, yeah, yeah. People are re-watching it on Peacock now that it's off Netflix. I had to think about where it was. Good job. Yeah, I miss it. I miss it terribly. Well, don't you have Peacock? No, I think we've got the free Peacock, but you can't watch them in order. Oh, I see. It's like you're watching old school syndicated style. Like a sampling. Yeah. Gotcha. Sorry. I know. Oh, I'm supposed to follow the plot lines on this show. I know, even though I've seen them a bajillion times, but I like to watch them in order. Kate, I have follow up on the Chipotle free halloween food item thing oh remember we talked about this a while back i said i think if you dress up as a burrito and go in there you can get a free burrito okay i think that must be from a long time ago okay because i ran into a story about burritos Mm -hmm. at chipotle Mm -hmm. spelled b-o-o-r-i-t-o-s which requires you to use the app on halloween and you can score a six dollar burrito or bowl or whatever similar item but nothing for free if you dress up like a boo rito doesn't seem to be the case no nope. hmm. yeah well, back in my day yeah people wouldn't wrap up they'd have their their forearm like wrapped in foil I'm like what are you doing oh i'm dressed as a burrito so i can go to chipotle and get my free burrito for halloween <laughs> i was gonna say because i wouldn't it seems like that would cost chipotle a lot of money once people realize they could just wrap some foil around their forearm and get a free burrito Maybe it was open to interpretation of the cashier in charge. If the cashier in charge was like, nope, that's not burrito enough, $10. <laughs> well, the, the friends that I had heard that had tried it got away, got away with that one. And yeah, I'm not sure. Would you want to take that chance? Maybe you can put up your foil wrapped forearm to the person, the first person that starts prepping your food. Like, is this burrito looking enough for me to get my free burrito? I don't know that I could do the forearm. I think I would have to do way more than the forearm to be a convincing burrito. Well, it doesn't matter in the case of you wanting to get a free burrito from Chipotle because that doesn't exist anymore. No mo. But you can get a $6 burrito on Halloween with the app. But maybe do you want to go as a burrito just for Halloween in general, Kate? Just in general? I mean, it'd be kind of easy. Just wrap yourself in foil and yeah, there it is. Yeah, I guess a thing of aluminum foil. You could probably wrap yourself with one thing of aluminum foil, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. How would you wrap yourself in that? Just roll around in it if you didn't have anyone to help you? I think I would require some help, yeah. No, if if no one could help you. I think you might be able to pull it off if you stretched out 
you know, however many yards of foiler there and then just rolled yourself <laughs> across it. Why can't I have help? Uh, because that's just the rule of this particular game that I just came up with. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. This, it's a challenge, Kate. Come on. Okay. Okay. And the listener can't wait to see how you do it on the Matt and Kate Facebook on Halloween. Ooh. Ooh. So you're going to do it? No. Okay. I didn't think so. <laughs> Matt, what is your least favorite Halloween candy? The orange and the orange and brown things. The you know what I'm talking about? They're like, uh, are they like taffy or something? What are those? Peanut butter kisses. Yeah, that's it. I think that's right. Okay. I think I always forget the name of this because this is not the first time we've talked about it. I'm going to search it just to make sure that we're talking about the same yeah. thing. Wrapped in paper. Yeah, and the paper seems to stay attached to it when you remove it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Extra fiber. And it's kind of gross. But yeah, the peanut butter ki- kisses are orange and black wrapped tightly. That is the worst candy, and I think most people would probably agree. You? All right, yeah, yeah, I'm on board. Okay. There's a new survey by Byte, B-Y-T-E, that has the worst and most hated Halloween candy. And I, I kind of feel attacked in this list. I'm just going to tell you that. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Number five, Mike and Ike's. Who doesn't okay. like Mike and Ike's? Eh, they're okay. I, I mean, they're okay. I wouldn't want to get those. I don't know that I've seen Mike and Ike's in like small boxes. What do you get, like two in a box? I feel like that's a movie theater candy, really. Yeah. Okay. Number four, caramel apples. What? That's not really Halloween candy. It's a Halloween treat, but... It could be full of razor blades, remember? Right. Or drugs. Caramel apples. Those are so good. Number three, this one to me is the worst. I don't know how it's number three and not number one. Dots. Oh, dots. Yeah. Dots feel like they were invented to test your dental work. Huh. You don't think that the can the uh you don't think that the caramel apple is? No. Dots really? like they are old and they oh. harden and they're hurt and they don't even taste good. Not even worth it. Okay. Yeah, they're they look like they're little cylinder looking things. They look like gumdrops, but they don't have the sugar on them. They just have tons of sugar in them. Yeah. Instead. Yeah. Okay. Number two, hot tamales. Hmm. I like hot tamales. Interesting. But again, I feel like you're right when you say movie theater candy, not yeah. Halloween candy. Well, I can see the kids not being into it. Yeah. Due too, to the hot. Too spicy. Right, right. Number one, candy corn. I do not get it. I, I feel attacked. I do, not, <laughs> I do not get the hatred for candy corn. I love candy corn. But I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people do hate it. Yep. So, and it's probably the most popular of the candies on this list. I would think so, yeah. And so, thus, maybe more people give it out. And more people are likely to hate it as a result of just math. I don't know. I don't know. We try not to do too much math real time on the show. I offered Elliot some candy corn. Yeah. I said, Do you want any candy corn mix? And she's like, I can only have five pieces before I feel like I'm going to throw up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's your top off? She's like, yep. Now, the candy corn mix is candy corn. Is it honey roasted peanuts? Dry roasted. Dry roasted peanuts. Salted, dry roasted peanuts, and M&Ms. And M&Ms. Mm-hmm. So what's that mean? So you can have five of, any, of, of that combination of any of those pieces together? No, just five pieces of candy corn. Oh, candy corn. Does she pick the candy corn themselves out? Yeah. 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 She's not a big peanuts fan, but she'll hmm. eat M&Ms, but... Yeah. Candy corn's where it's at, and then it gets your stomach. Yeah, that's true. The candy corn can get you. She tops off at five. I mean, she knows her limit. That's yeah, pretty healthy. Very impressive for a 10-year-old. Yeah. Not when her puking all over the place. Yeah. No. Nope. Thanks, Kate. Mm-hmm. So that new Dahmer series is Netflix's number two most popular English language show yet, Kate. I saw that. Yep. 700 million hours. Yucks. They, for comparison, the second season of Bridgerton was watched 656 million hours. I have not yet watched. Have you watched this Dahmer show yet? No, I watched the trailer and it was terrifying. Eh. You know enough about the story, though, right? Of Jeffrey Dahmer. I know enough about Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. Yes. You've had your fill. You don't need any more. That I feel like I would learn more with this Netflix that I don't know that my brain can hold that. So still the winner right now is Stranger Things 4. 
Season four, yeah. Yeah, season four. So that one with Don, which is nearly twice as many hours viewed. Seven hundred million for Dahmer and one point three five billion for Stranger Things wow. season four. Yeah, turns out people like that show more than the show about a serial killer. Hmm. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? If I had Netflix, I'd probably watch. Honestly, I'd probably watch Dahmer before Stranger Things. And no, not because I'm looking for tips. Oh God. <laughs> oh, that's how I should cook that. Great. Uh, at least you went with tips for cooking and not tips for dating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe that too. Hmm. Oh, I'll have, to, golly. I'll have to watch the series and get back with you. Matt, we were talking about the Apple Watch detecting roller coasters. Yeah. What was it? The Apple Watch was calling emergency officials because they were on a roller coaster, right? We detect that you were on a roller coaster. It's like, oh, thanks for that notification. Right. It's calling 911 because the high speed and the G's of the roller coaster were fooling the watch into thinking that people were in car accidents. A new feature to the Apple Watch and phone. Well, a woman is claiming that her Apple Watch predicted her pregnancy before her doctor. Okay, I know that recently, maybe it's the same version, of, that's, maybe it's just in a new watch. It can detect whether you've ovulated, like, after the fact. Oh, this was yeah. heart rate, so I didn't know that little. That's weird that your watch can tell if you ovulated. Yeah, it says, like, you look like, you look like you've ovulated. They, they say we can't tell, we can't predict whether you're about to ovulate, but obviously you could get detect some kind of pattern there, right? Mm. I'm not an ovulation expert here. No, neither am I, but that sounds like you're putting your watch where you don't need to. Oh, that's kind of gross. Yeah. But that's not the case. Like it detects that's not like the case. changes no. in your body temperature for that one. This one, uh, the woman had an elevated heart rate for 15 days. And she did some research huh. and she thought, hmm, I wonder if she's pregnant. She took a pregnancy test. Ta da! Positive. And there it was confirmed her apple watch's discovery interesting yeah there's lots of things the watch can kind of tip you off to but they can't really promise most of them because the fda won't sign off on it more or less or would have to spend years in trials and thus slow down their ability to sell however many millions or billions of devices right so interesting watch out for your yeah. watch might know you better than you do or your doctor or your doctor well she why are we blaming the doctor? Had she seen the doctor before having the pregnancy test? It says her Apple Watch detected her pregnancy before her doctor. Okay. Well, that might be an unfair comparison. I, we need to know the access. Was the doctor just in there? Was the doctor talking to just in there? That was a bad turn of phrase. Yeah, that was. <laughs> but, all right. Sounds like a good opportunity to be done talking about this topic. <laughs> All right, they did the math. Starbucks coffee versus making it at home, Kate. Okay. Now, you're not really a Starbucks enthusiast. I'm all, not really. a coffee enthusiast. No. I'm not anti-Starbucks. I'm just... Oh, right. You'd go there and get a yeah. hot cocoa? No. No. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they're hot cocoa. They you... taste like coffee. You're right. I remember that now. Yeah, I think it tastes like coffee. What, what will you get there? I've gotten an Arnold Palmer there a couple of times, because oh. if I get the tea, it hurts my tummy. And then do you pour some rum into it, make it a dirty Palmer or whatever no. the goes in that? Oh, yeah. Arnold Palmer no. with some booze in it, Kate. Got to try that. Okay. Yeah. But that's a recipe for a different day. Okay. So they did, <laughs> Starbucks. So, yeah, they did, they did the math. <laughs> and, for example, if you go for the simple tall 12-ounce drip coffee, one a day, that's a buck eighty-five a day. As opposed to doing it yourself, which would be sixty-two cents a day, scoring you a savings of three hundred and seven dollars a year. Okay. If we go for the Grande Cafe Latte, sixteen ounce there, that's three sixty-five a day, and then your savings end up being five hundred seventy-five dollars and sixty-eight cents. And then finally, their other option is the Venti Caramel or Caramel Macchiato. $4.75 a day, where you could save $736.25 over the course of a year if you were to do that at home. And they point out that this includes the price of the equipment that you would need. Oh, okay. But you know what I say? Hard telling. You don't have to do Starbucks math. You don't need to do that to yourself, dear listener. If you enjoy your Starbucks that much and you enjoy the convenience, 
it goes back to what I like to think of often is what's your time worth? True. Mm-hmm. Is it worth 300 bucks for you to save the time to make a cup of coffee each day? Go for it. Go wild. Here we are empowering the listener like we do here on Matt and Kate. Right, Kate? Whoop, whoop. Yep, that's us. Matt, Lifetime just released their schedule of the upcoming 2022 holiday movies. Thank God. I know. Now you can schedule your social calendar around Lifetime holiday yeah. movies. And then I just need the Hallmark calendar and I'll be good to go. Right. I think okay, so. Okay, so I thought this would be fun. Let's play real Lifetime movie or not. Okay. So I'm going to give you a title of a movie. You're going to tell me if it's a real or a fake movie. Okay. Okay. I am ready. Merry Swissmas. <laughs> uh, gosh. I will say that's a real one. That is a real Lifetime Christmas movie. Okay. I thought maybe it was sponsored by Swiss Miss or something. Right. Yeah. The Dog Days of Christmas. Real or fake? Real. Correct. Real. Damn. I wish I knew who was in these movies or at least a little bit of the plot, <laughs> but real or fake reindeer games homecoming. I will say that's fake. That is real. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Santa boot camp. Is it real or fake? <laughs> Santa boot camp. Santa boot camp. Is this a real lifetime movie or a fake? I'll say it's real. It is real. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. I imagine there's a bunch of Santa. I imagine there's a bunch of Santas. Would be my guess. I would think so. Yeah. An army of Santas. Or maybe just one Santa who's got to get his butt in shape, and so he has to go to boot camp. Maybe it's about sewing boots. Maybe the elves have to sew a bunch of boots. Okay. Real or fake? Cloudy with a chance of Christmas. <laughs> cloudy with a chance of Christmas. Cloudy with a chance of Christmas. Real or fake? Fake. Is real. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Single and ready to jingle. <laughs> Is that real <laughs> or fake? For a lifetime uh, holiday movie. Real. That is real. Okay. I see how this game is going. Last one. All right. Six Degrees of Santa. Six Degrees of Santa. I'm going to say it's real. It is real. Yep. Every single answer was that was real, right? I know. I deleted all the ones that were fake, and I'm like, these are good, too, though. Yep. Yep. That's fantastic. You miss Cloudy with a Chance of Christmas and Reindeer Games of Homecoming. Yes, yeah, I thought there might be a chance that they would get in trouble legally for having those names be too close to actual movies. Yeah, apparently not. Until I realized the pattern for the last one or two. They're all real. Well, you got me good, Kate. But I'm sure the listener got all of them correct. Because, reminder, all the Matt and Kate listeners are smarter than me, but smarter than the general public as well. Totally. Right? Okay. Do you ever have one of your kids grab your steering wheel so that you can like work on your hair or do your makeup or whatever, and they can drive for a little bit? You can still operate the gas and the brakes, but maybe they could drive for you while you, you know, tend to your hair. Not to tend to my hair. No. Okay. What about what about when you were like fifteen? Like, let's say you're in the car when you're a fifteen year old, and you're driving. Like, oh, I need to do my hair real quick. Can you drive? Can you grab the wheel when you were more when you were less mature? I should say. Do you think you would ever done such a thing? Let me correct this. Yeah. I've never asked the children to take the wheel. Oh, gosh. Monty has taken the wheel. Oh, man. But I also let my kids sit on my lap and drive when we go to my mom's house. Monty, take the wheel. Right? The cops are going to be looking for you now. Why? Driving around with your kids on your lap? On a country road and up the driveway. Gravel? Dirt. Dirt. Hmm. But you still have control of the gas. I still have control of the gas. Gotcha. They go maybe half a mile on the gra- on the okay. on the dirt road. Yeah. And then half a mile up the gravel driveway. Gotcha. I think that's a f- fairly common thing to do. So they're just going like 20 miles an hour or something. If that, yeah. Yeah. The reason I bring this story up was that these two 15-year-old females ended up in the hospital. Moderate injuries. So I think they're mm. expected to recover. South of St. Joe, four miles south of St. Joe on 371 Highway. And the crash report says that the driver was fixing her hair and was like, hey, could you go ahead and grab the wheel for a second? And then the passenger lost control of the vehicle 
And then the driver then grabbed the wheel, overcorrected, went off the roadway, rolled over, Mm. and were ejected. Oh, no. Yeah. All kinds of mistakes on that drive. Mm. So there's the lesson for you. You really shouldn't let someone else grab the steering wheel. I can't believe you allowed Monty to. What was the situation there? Or what is the situation there? Does that happen often? No, I know one time for sure I was looking for something in my purse. Okay. You couldn't just hand him the purse or have him go through the purse? He wasn't finding it. So I said, no. hand me the purse. Give it to me. Yeah. It's not a fixing your hair thing. I'm more of a drive with your knees when you're fixing your hair. Oh, okay. Far more reasonable. Yeah. yeah. So public service announcement that you probably shouldn't drive with your knees either. Right, Kate? Right, you Kate? probably should not make a habit out of doing it. <gasps> okay. Not just for grins and giggles. I hope most people aren't doing that. That's all right. I'll just do my makeup on the way to work and drive with my knees. Yeah, I don't do that. I know there's the lipstick maneuver where you can drive, you know, have one hand on the steering wheel and yeah, and lipstick maneuver, but. I don't trust myself to do mascara. I've seen women driving, putting on their mascara, and I don't trust myself to do that. So I do that at a stoplight if I need to. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Or just, can you just forego the mascara or no? No, you never leave. It's a silly thing. Yeah. Okay. Silly of me. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Just do it at the stoplight. I don't know. I've never, I've never worn any. Shocking. I know. I know. That's probably why you don't know then. Yeah. Right. If you don't. Yeah. If you don't know, you don't know. Or if you know, you know. Something like that. Yeah. Matt, new quiz from BuzzFeed. <laughs> Which celebrities people want to see as president? Oh, no. Yeah. I'm scared. Okay. What do they want? Okay. We do not want The Rock as president. Really? Huh. Apparently. I'm yeah. surprised. We do want Dolly Parton as president. Hmm. Okay. According to BuzzFeed. According to BuzzFeed. People taking the poll on BuzzFeed. So keep in mind mm-hmm. there's going to be a BuzzFeed. Maybe BuzzFeed has a uh, hard anti-rock bias. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So no to The Rock. Yes to Dolly Parton. No to Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Hmm. Fairly popular fellow as well. I could see him being a thumbs up, but thumbs down. Yes to Morgan Freeman. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. He probably should be president. No to Shaq. No to Shaq. Yes to Tom Hanks. Oh, of course, to Hanks. Yeah. I mean, come on. Other no's? Guy Fieri. (laughs) I hope not. Paul Rudd. Kelly Clarkson. Samuel L. Jackson. And Martha Stewart, but only because she probably can't be president because of her whole jail time thing. Well, she could still be president, can't she? I thought you can't be convicted of a crime. Oh, felony specifically, right? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you could be convicted of a speeding ticket and still run for president. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Martha Stewart might not be able to run for president. Does it say that in front of you? Or are you just guessing? It does not. It just says okay. no but maybe that's the whole jail thing. That'd be tragic. Mm-hmm. It'd be a gorgeous White House. No kidding. It would look good. Have you ever thought about cooking everything in your fridge, Kate? Cooking everything in my fridge? Yeah. Go through everything in your fridge. Cook all the things in your fridge. Not necessarily at once, but you wouldn't uh, be allowed to go to the grocery store. You just have to go through everything in your fridge. Cook all the things in your fridge. Excluding like condiments and sauces, right? No, you need to guzzle some ketchup and mustard, I think. Oh, then no. No, I'm you're out. right. I- excluding that. Excluding that. Well, that's what we try to do. And? Did you get close to succeeding? Yeah. Yeah, I've read this as a good tip for saving money when you're getting groceries, more or less. Like, you've got stuff in your fridge. Like, go ahead and every once in a while, cook through all of it. Yeah, I hate wasting food. So we're big leftovers people. Okay. I I figured most people rotated food around so that the expiring stuff came to the front and then you'd cook through that as opposed to doing an exercise. We're like, well, guess what? We're having all veggies tonight. Hmm. You know? Yeah. No, I'm pretty sure we've done that a couple of times. Nice. I mean, not cooking to where like it's empty, but yeah, we've not let anything go to waste. Does okay. That sense? Is that what you're asking? I don't know. Yeah, well, okay. N- what you said accomplishes the same thing, but yeah. I think what the implication, I was reading an article about this, 
is that if you take the time to actually go ahead and cook through all of the stuff you have until mm-hmm. you no longer have things to eat and then go to the store and start over, you're going to end up saving money because nothing will ever really have the opportunity to gotcha. get pushed to the back of your fridge and spoil on you. Yeah, I think we're in a pretty good position in frozen food Yeah, that we're never going to go hungry. Like we're always oh, okay. going to have something. I get something to augment whatever's in the yeah. refrigerator that you're cooking through. That's a good point. Yeah. So if I don't have any more spaghetti leftovers, but I don't want to go to the store, we can do breakfast for dinner and do like French toast sticks and eggs and sausage or biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Maybe some of your half a cow. Yeah. Oh, there's a hesitation there. Well, I was thinking specifically for breakfast for dinner. and Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you not like a, like a breakfast hamburger where you would have a, an egg over easy on it or something? I do, but that's not typically our, our breakfast for dinner go-tos. Breakfast yeah. for dinner usually means it's going to be easy. Eggs, real quick. Some toast, gotcha. maybe some bacon. Yeah, I think eggs with just some like beef on the side, kind of crumbled up, can be pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. Getting hungry. I know. Keep doing we do this. that to ourselves, don't we? Yes, yes, we do. That's what we. That's the main objective of this show is to make ourselves hungry and possibly our listeners hungry too. It seems. <laughs> 